If you live on the East Coast or in the Midwest, you've probably seen a white-tailed deer snacking on some tulips in your garden or standing on the roadside, ready to leap in front of your car. They range from southern Canada to South America. An estimated 30 million live in the United States alone. Deer populations are flourishing, helped by a lack of natural predators and an endless supply of food planted by thoughtful humans in their own yards. They're wreaking havoc on neighborhoods, farms, and forests, devouring our landscape and landscaping. On a 700-acre former naval training site in Silver Spring, Maryland, biologists are working on a novel way to curb deer numbers, contraception. started in about 2003, so uh, going into 2004, we darted uh, approximately 30 animals, 30 does, and then we followed them for a full year to see what kind of reproductive output they would have the first year. So we had to wait till the spring of 05 to see how many fawns they had or if they reproduced at all. They found that following that first year, between 80 to 90 percent of the does treated did not give birth. In the vaccine's second year, it dropped to 50 percent. The next phase of the study is to dart 30 additional deer on this site with a new formulation of this contraceptive that we're hoping will have longer lasting and multiple year effects. I followed the team as they implemented this phase on a recent afternoon. The contraceptive, called gonicon, interrupts the reproductive cycle at the hypothalamus rather than at the reproductive organ, meaning it can work on both males and females. For these tests, only does are being treated. You seen any untagged does or fawns or anything? That's one of our vehicles out looking for does. Uh, there's another one that's got the large radio. They usually just work in teams of one in case they have to walk out into the woods uh, if they have to stalk an animal uh, before they dart it and immobilize it. So they work independently in radio communication and then they'll contact each other when a deer is darted. And then everybody convenes on the area and we all work it up. The animal's darted with a, uh, a 3cc dart. It comes out of a dart gun and you hit the deer in a large muscle mass, shoulder or uh, hind quarter. The deer can go anywhere from 10 to 12 feet or it can run a couple of hundred feet and then it'll lay down and go to sleep. The contraception has proven effective, but it's not cheap. It costs $1,000 per animal. By comparison, police sharpshooting programs run between $150 to $500 per animal and managed public hunts cost about $25 per deer. Plus, local governments can charge permit and lottery fees to recoup their costs. The initiative is also time intensive. This doe, for instance, took several hours to locate, dart, vaccinate, and release. Even with three people, the team can only dart a small number of deer on their best days. In areas where there's two or three hundred deer per square mile, contraceptives alone won't work. The vaccine isn't for private use. Once the FDA approves it, it'll be available only to wildlife specialists. They'll use it as another tool in the ongoing fight against Bambi's bottomless appetite. At Seneca Creek State Park in Gaithersburg, Maryland, biologist George Timko shows me just how whitetails can decimate an area. This area that's been enclosed has actually um, been done to exclude deer from the area to show that the effects that deer can have on the habitat. If you look inside the enclosure, you can see that the vegetation is, is pretty thick and dense. These are native plants that have grown back since the area was fenced off from deer three years ago. Outside the enclosure is another story. Deer prefer the native vegetation over the exotics, so they leave the exotics and they eat the, the native stuff, and then if there are too many deer, of course, they suppress the natives and then the exotics can take over. Like Japanese barberry and stilt grass, which neither deer nor any other animal eats. We have seen forest resources in this county that are severely depleted and altogether uh, not rejuvenating. Uh, the mature trees that exist, when they die off, there is no understory to replace them. Uh, that's a scary thought. It's not just plant life that feels the brunt of an exploding deer population. They're wiping out resources for squirrels and birds. And when these small animals leave, their predators, like foxes and snakes, follow, changing the forest ecology. For Discovery News, I'm Jorge Ribas. Hi, we're the Discovery News video team, and we want your videos. Your science videos, to be exact. So if you're a student doing experiments at home, or a researcher in the field, 
And if you have a camera, you then capture those experiments and upload them to our website. It's pretty easy. Here's how you do it. Just go to this website below, dfc.discovery.com slash news slash sidewalk science. And if they get our Bunsen's burning, we will put them online and you will be recognized for the mad genius you really are. That's all I have to say.